Your love is amazing, steady and changing. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God's song rising up in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me say Yes, you make me sing. Lord, you make me sing, sing, sing. How you make me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Um, by saying, Ramsey, 
would you like to play with me? And he'll say yes. You can give it to other people. You can send the food to the food pantry, and if a friend comes over, you can share with us. Donating some to the second street pantry or home, homeless shelters. Whenever my friends usually forget a pencil, I usually give them to them. Whenever I like using colored pencils, drawn on the pencil, so I hand them to them. Well, we always have a lot of fun when we play games or work on this little tree we're working on growing. It makes me happy and like that and it shows. Good morning. Good morning. Aren't the babies so cute? Yes. My name is Pastor Andrea, and I am one of the pastors here. And we want to welcome you on this morning. What a great day to be in worship here at the gathering here at First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville. We have some wonderful news to share on this morning. You ready for it? Yes. We have hired a new director of high school ministries, and her name is Kristen Wells. And she comes with a, um, a degree in youth ministry and experience as she served at a church in St. Louis. Her first day is May 10th, and she is in worship today. And we want to greet her with the love of Christ on today. And we're so grateful she'll be joining our staff soon and excited about what our, youth, um, our um, senior high ministry is going to look like in the coming days and months. Kristen will be around after worship, so stick around um, as we greet, um, go out these doors and greet Kristen a little bit later in worship. To our first time, um, folks are here in person in our line, and all who have joined the line, a special welcome to you. We want to know that you're here, so please say hello and take a moment to fill out the connect card so we will know how to connect with you on this week, whether it's through prayer, whether you're looking for a new church um, family here, want to know more about that, let us know so that we can be praying with you and also connect with you. Over the last few weeks, we have um, focused on who we are as a church here at First Church of Downtown Bentonville and how God is calling us to plan for us to go into a new year of 2021. Through our sermon series, come together and come to the table here at First Church of Downtown Bentonville. We've asked a question, how to gather, how to learn, how to serve, and how to extend this table as we go out into community to be the church that God has called us to be. So we're asking you to prayerfully consider how you are going to give your time, your gifts, and your resources as we are attuned to God's call for us here and now to live our mission that we're called to, to be Christ in the world and how we're going to invite others as we're sitting at a table out into our community. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and holy Lord, you're so worthy of all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And this very moment in our hearts, we give you thanks and praise for the God you are to us every day. You're a faithful, faithful God, and we give thanks for that. And we all come from all walks of life. We've had all types of calls last week, and we're going into this week with uncertainty, and some are, have lost hope, and some are needing healing. Some are needing you to move on this morning, Lord. And so we lift those up to you on this morning. This old God, we know you're a God that is a God that is with us in the highs and the lows of our lives. And we know a God that hears our silent tears. We know that you're a God that is here and waiting for us to surrender to you. So as I hope as we pray and as we sing together, as we hear God's words, that we leave this place a little bit better to live out the mission you're called us to be. In Christ we pray. Amen. As you're able, we invite you to stand and join with us this morning. trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name 
sing that again. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. You are our nerves, and we, your muscle. Living Christ, community of the whole, body of the one, we belong to you. Our life is gathered into you. All our actions happen inside of you. We see the world through your eyes. We love the world through your broken, joyous heart. We are the fingers of your hand. In confidence and humility, we abide in you. Held in your peace, loving with your love, rejoicing with your joy. Amen. I invite you to be seated. 
Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church. I want to add my welcome to Pastor Andreas. I'm Pastor JJ. If this is your first time joining us here in the sanctuary, I just want to add my welcome to you. It's so good to have you here with us. I'm going to be reading from the gospel according to St. John this morning, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 14. Listen for the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning. And after this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test them, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 and all. Then Jesus took the loaves. When he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were also seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we meditate on your holy word, we remember that the bread of life has been given to us so that we may share this bread with others. Open our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we hear with joy what you say to us today. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor talks about the children gathered in her church where she served, and she wrote this. They hung on my legs after the service was over, clinging to my knees while I shook their parents' hands at the door because they were not old enough to serve on committees or wrangle about the order of worship. The children often had a better grasp of what church was all about than we did. She said, when one four-year-old rode by the church with his mother and an out-of-town guest, the four-year-old pointed, that, he announced, is where God gives us the bread. Notice that the child didn't say, that is where I sit in the pew. Didn't say, that is where the pastor talks too long. That is where I sing the songs, where I learn the Bible stories, where I have extra brothers and sisters and parents and grandparents. The child didn't even say, that is where the pastor gives the bread. This four-year-old already knew that this is God's table and that the church is where a generous God offers us bread. And a little child shall lead them. It was a child that took the lead in understanding our generous God in today's gospel story. This story of Jesus multiplying a few bread and, and a few bread loaves and fish to feed a huge crowd of people appears in all the Gospels. So we know it was a familiar and a favorite story of the early church. Jesus had spent the day with the crowd, healing them and teaching them. And as the evening drew near, he turns to the disciple Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? The gospel writer John tells us that Jesus asked this question to test the disciples because Jesus knew 
what he was going to do. Philip uses logic and says, well, six months worth of wages, it's not even going to be enough to buy a snack to feed this crowd. And Andrew says, hey, uh, there's a boy here. He's got five barley loaves, he's got two fish. But what are they among so many people? I like to imagine that the boy in today's gospel story, much like the four-year-old in Reverend Taylor's church, understands who Jesus is more than the disciples do. After all, everyone has witnessed Jesus' healings and miracles for the better part of a day. So when this child overhears Jesus asking where they are going to get bread to feed this crowd, This boy willingly gives over his lunchbox to the disciple who's closest to him because he knows what Jesus can do with it. Jesus takes the loaves and the fish. He gives thanks. He shares with all those who are seated. And John tells us that everyone ate as much as they wanted. When everyone had their fill, Jesus asked the disciples, gather up the leftovers, and it filled 12 baskets. Witnessing this miracle made them wake up and say, this is the prophet who has come into the world. Now the fact that the gospel writer makes a point of describing that everyone had their fill and everyone ate until they were satisfied points back to something in John's gospel in the first chapter. He writes, from his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. The boy knew what Jesus was up to because he understands who God is through the works of Jesus Christ. The disciples were caught up in the facts, what they could see with human eyes. Well, there's no money, so there's no bread. Nothing to do here but send everybody on home. But the boy understood God's generosity. When we share what we have and we give it back to God, there's more than enough. Perhaps a child, this boy who had already witnessed what Jesus Christ does when all seems lost and chaos ensues and nothing feels possible, perhaps this boy knew that grace doesn't just happen when we've planned ahead and when we've paid our dues. Grace surprises us when we are running on empty. The bread of life exceeds all of our expectations. So the miracle for us modern day disciples is when we remember that following Jesus on the road expects that we respond out of abundant faith rather than scarcity faith. Abundant faith sees beyond the literal to the possibilities. Abundant faith expects that there will always be enough for God's people. Abundant faith remembers all the ways that we have been led and has hope and the promise that God will provide. So this The heart of this story for me is not in what Jesus can do in feeding a crowd. It is realizing that the disciples were operating out of a lack of faith. They were limited by the realities in front of them. They were not rooted in what God can always do through us. Yet a child, empowered by what he had seen in the acts of Jesus Christ, led them all to abundant faith. This child taught them a lesson. If you share what you have, everyone will have enough. The junior high and high school youth of 16th section United Methodist Church were trying to look for a mission project. And Shauna, their youth director, has lived around Cabot, Arkansas her whole life. So she knew where the needs were in the community. She knew that there was a need for safe and secure public housing. She saw the growing number of low-income areas. She saw the growing number of mobile home parks. And so the youth decided to go in pairs, and they were going to knock on doors in these communities and say, we're with 16th Section United Methodist Church, and we're giving away food, no strings attached. They acquired, they fitted a trailer, And now, each week, they feed about 70 people because of this youth mission. And people from the neighborhoods come out of their houses because they recognize the van. They recognize the trailer. They come out to greet them. The youth 
developed a trust with their neighbors. And some even joined them for monthly community dinners at the church. One woman who came to the trailer was so weak because she hadn't had food in a few days. A grandmother came out and greeted them. She's providing for seven grandkids because her daughter is serving time in prison. The pastor said, the people we serve are living in difficult circumstances, but we don't ask about that. We don't discriminate against anyone. We are focusing on providing food for families, and the only criteria is that they have a need for food. The youth didn't form a committee. They didn't sit down and write a mission plan. These United Methodist youth knew that they had food to share with those who were in need because they had been formed in the knowledge that God provides through the hands and the feet of the disciples of Jesus Christ. These young people know what it means that we are called to share what we have with our neighbors because the values of neighboring have been poured into them. Each time they come to God's table, they have been taught that God meets them here. They have been taught that the bread of life is available for them, and they have been taught to share what they have with others. Here at FUMC Bentonville, we believe that our children and our youth aren't the future of the church. They are the church. They have been formed by what they receive when we gather, learn, and serve at God's table. And they are empowered to extend that table out into our community. Jillian Grau is an 11-year-old in our church, and she invited her Girl Scout troop to be involved in our church ministry. The Homegrown Gardens Project is a partnership between our church and Havenwood. And a few weeks ago, many of our families, our children and their families, gathered together to plant a garden, to paint rocks of affirmation and love, and to be in fellowship with the women and the children at Havenwood. Jillian brought a friend, and her mom, Julie, came to help. And they decided through the Girl Scout troop to add some additional gifts to this garden. So they added some strawberry plants and some trellises and even a bird bath to what the church had already done. And then the girls sat together at the table with the women and the children at Havenwood to hear more about this mission. What kind of abundance can overflow from a gift? From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. We expect abundance when the world cries out there's not enough. And the miracle for us is what can happen when we change our mindset from scarcity to abundance. Abundant living requires that we hope, we share, we give, we put our faith in what God is doing and what God will do. What can happen when we move from a faith rooted in scarcity thinking, we only have five loaves and two fish, what are those among all these people? to abundant thinking. Thank God for this boy who was willing to share five loaves and two fish, all that he had with this crowd. Faithful disciples get caught up in abundance and gratitude and giving what they have. A life of faith overcomes skepticism and self-preoccupation and insecurity. We have so many gifts to share. And if we are willing to share what we have and work together, we can do mighty things here through our church at FUMC Bentonville. What are the ways that you can share just a little bit more in the coming year? How can you give up your time? How can you share your talents? How can you share your gifts? If we look to the leadership of a child who understands the miracle of sharing, can we too trust in what God can do when we share what we have? When Jesus took what the disciples had gathered, the loaves, the fish, he blessed, he broke them, he shared them, he gave them to the people who had gathered. He hosted the table just as he hosts the communion table for us each week. And when Jesus hosts the table, we remember that the great God of Israel, the creator of the universe, cares whether we share this table with others. Opening our communion table to anyone who wishes to receive should be extended out in the community for anyone who has a need. 
As we come to the table each week, it is where we receive the bread of life, and it is where we share the bread of life. Grace, it shows up in the most unlikely times and places in a boy who will share his lunch, in youth who knock on doors, in the vision of an 11-year-old who believes that she can make a difference. Grace shows up because we were first given grace and that invites us to share grace with others. In his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. God does not have to do this, and yet God does. And that is enough, enough to overcome. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace upon grace. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. As we invite our ushers to come forward, and as we prepare our hearts to give, I want to thank you for your tithes and your offering that go to support our, our youth and children's ministries. Our ministries here help our, our youth to, to gather, to learn, to serve together through programs like Vacation Bible School, Confirmation Class, Children's First, and other mission opportunities and conference-wide opportunities for our youth to serve together and to learn together. This morning, we are also offering Books of Love. As you see a little cart there with books there. Books of Love is this, it goes to support the Arkansas Union Conference of the United Methodist Church initiative to give every third grader a book. Every third grader in Arkansas a book. Because in third grade, it's there when students begin a move from learning to read to reading to, to learn. And one third of third graders in our state in 2019, we're on grade level, one third. And so giving new books or lightly used books to um, this initiative will go towards impacting and giving a dent into reading literacy for our third graders in our state. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we come together and come to the table, we share Jesus Christ with each other and with our neighbors. We offer our gifts to you in response to the great generosity you have shown us. Enable our gifts to support the mission to which you have called us. We pray this in your powerful son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Top of four legs, it's got a few coffee stains, and a thousand marks from God knows when. Ain't too many things that can stand the test of time. But this family table's held together by a love that never dies. So won't you come on in? Supper's almost done. Go ahead and call your friends, 'cause we got room for everyone. Let's make some memories around this nine-foot pine Pull up a chair and stay a while At the family table The family table It's the cornerstone That held us all up Through the best of times Made our way when times got tough We blew the candles out In our walk through time This family table's bound together By love that never dies So won't you come on in Supper's almost done Go ahead and call your friends Cause we got room for everyone Let's make some memories around this nine foot pine up a chair and stay a while
close our eyes and bow our heads Thank the Lord for everything that's done And for everyone at the family table So please come on in When your work is done, go ahead and wash your head Gather around with everyone Making memories around this nine foot pine and No other place can ease your mind Like a family table Like a family table